Hi guys! Welcome sa Engineered Math Channel. Sa video na to ay ituturo ko sa inyo ang one-sided limits. So kung gusto nyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so far ay meron na akong videos about introduction to limits as well as theorems on limits kung saan ay tinuro ko sa inyo kung ano ba ang limit, ano yung notation sa limit, paano ito basahin at paano kuhain ang limit ng isang function using different theorems. So ngayon ay tuturo ko naman sa inyo kung ano ang one-sided limits. Okay, so suppose we want to find the limit of square root of x minus 4 as x approaches 4. So, ito daw yung pinapahanap sa ating limit. So, base dun sa video ko sa introduction about limits, di ba, kapag naghahanap tayo ng limit as x approaches a value, let's say dito sa 4, ang concern lang natin ay yung value nung x na close enough sa 4 but not necessarily equal sa 4 itself. So, for example, we can assign an open interval containing 4, let's say, 3,5. So, 4 is within this interval, right? Now, within this interval, kabilang yung 4 at pwede tayong mag-assign ng value ng x na close enough sa 4. Pwedeng mataas sa 4, let's say, 4.0001, close enough. Or pwede ring mababa sa 4, let's say, 3.999, close enough din sa 4. Okay, however, kung mapapansin nyo, kung pipiliin natin yung value ng x na less than 4, let's say 3.9999 below, walang meaning itong limit natin. Kasi di ba pag naghahanap tayo ng limit, base dun sa video ko about theorem sa limits, pwede natin isubstitute yung value ng x mismo dito. So, kung mag approach tayo ng value ng x na mas mababa dun sa 4, let's say 3.9999, pag sinapsitot natin yun dito, 3.9999 minus 4, negative yung sagot. Which is kapag in-square root natin, kasi meron tayong square root na given dun sa function, magiging undefined kasi square root of negative number is undefined. So therefore, walang meaning itong limit na to kung i-consider natin yung mga values na less than uh, 4. Pero kung greater than 4, let's say 4.0001, pwede kasi magiging positive yung value nung uh, radical natin sa loob. So, pag in squared mo yung positive, possible. Okay, so therefore, itong limit na to has no meaning kung i-consider natin yung actual value na 4. But, kung ililimit lang natin na yung limit nitong square root of x minus 4 as x approaches 4 from the right at we can denote this by putting positive sign doon sa 4 therefore it will have a meaning wherein kapag sinapsitot natin yung value nung x na 4 ang limit nito ay square root of 4 minus 4 is square root of 0 equal 0 which has a meaning okay so tinatawag natin itong limit na to as the right hand limit. Okay? Or pwede ring one-sided limit from the right. Meaning, from the right, kasi kukuha tayo ng values ng x na nag approach doon sa 4 greater than it. Let's say nga yung 4.0001 close enough. Okay? So, yun tinatawag natin na right, na right hand limit. So, applic applicable itong one-sided limit na right hand kung meron nga tayong cases kung saan magiging undefined siya sa isang interval. Okay, for example, naging undefined siya sa uh, open interval 3,5 kasi magiging negative yung radikan kapag sinapsitot natin yung values ng x less than 4. Okay, so likewise, kung meron tayong right hand side limit, meron din tayong one-sided limit from the left or left hand side limit which is, kung consider natin yung same function ayon yung uh, values nung x na approaches 4 less than it let's say 3.9999 so kapag kinuha natin yun, undefined kasi magiging 
yung value nung limit natin is imaginary. Okay? Now, kapag sinabi na natin two-sided limits, yun na pumapasok yung dapat ay define pareho yung limit both sa right hand tsaka left hand side limit. Let's say dito sa 4. So, pwede natin gamitin dito yung actual number na 4. By the way, dito, para yung, dito pala sa left hand side limit, yung notation is limit of square root of x minus 4 as x approaches 4 negative. Yung sabi yun, mag-approach tayo ng values ng x less than 4. Okay? From the left. Okay? So, kapag two-sided limits na nga, Pwede na natin gamitin yung actual number na 4. Without With any sign, i-include natin either plus or minus. Meaning, define siya. So, wala tayong problema. So, this is the definition for two-sided limits. Churem, limit of f of x as x approaches a exists and equal to l if and only if limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left and Limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right, both exist and both are equal to L. Okay, so kung meron daw tayong limit of f of x as x approaches a positive equal sa limit of f of x as x approaches a negative and equal in sa L, therefore, pwede natin masabi na limit of f of x as x approaches a equals L and it exists. Okay, so... Kapag yung right-hand side limit ay hindi equal sa left-hand side limit ng isang given expression natin, therefore, the limit of that expression as x approaches the actual value A without considering kung either from the left or right man siya, it will exist and must be equal to L. Otherwise, the limit does not exist. For example, ito nga, the limit of square root of x minus 4 as x approaches 4 does not exist kasi magkaiba yung value ng limit of square root of x minus 4 as x approaches 4 from the right doon sa limit ng square root of x minus 4 as x approaches 4 from the left. Kasi dito ang limit niya ay 0, dito undefined. Okay? Okay, so let's solve some examples para mas ma-illustrate ko sa inyo ang paghahanap ng one-sided limits. So we have number 1, the signum function is defined by Signum x is equal to negative 1 if x is less than 0, 0 if x is equal to 0, and 1 if x is greater than 0. Okay, so piecewise function daw. So pag hinarap natin yung signum function, ito yung magiging graph niya. So when x is less than 0, not inclusive, yung value daw is negative 1. So negative 1 dito so open circle and then a straight line going to the left okay and then if x is 0 inclusive so equal siya sa 0 so ito yung point na yun 0 comma 0 and then if x is greater than 0 signum function is equal to 1 so ito yun 1 positive 1 open circle, not inclusive, tapos yung line, papunta dito sa kanan. Okay? So, find the limit of signum function x as x approaches 0 if it exists. Okay, so, hanapin daw natin yung limit ng signum function x as x approaches 0 if it exists. So, crucial kasi dito sa function na to, yung 0, base dito sa graph niya kasi merong discontinuity para ma-prove natin kung may define man yung limit ng signum function x as x approaches 0 dapat apply natin yung concept sa sinabi ko sa taas na yung limit ng signum function x as x approaches 0 from the right must be equal to the limit of signum function x as x approaches 0 from the left para maging equal na rin siya sa actual limit ng signum function x as x approaches 0 itself. Okay, so isa-isa natin. Hanapin natin itong limit of signum function x as x approaches 0 from the right. So dahil right hand side limit yung pinapahanap sa atin, yung niya-assign natin value sa x ay yung mga value na close enough but greater than 0. So, base dito sa graph at sa equation, dito tayo titingin which is equal siya sa 1. So, ito yung graph na yun, di ba? So, mapapansin nyo, 
anong ina-approach nung value nung function as x approaches 0 from the right. Itong 1 pa rin, right? Kasi constant function yan. By the way, yung mga limits pala doon sa theorems ko sa video ko about theorems on limits ay applicable din kapag finalitan nyo yung uh, value nung a ng pwedeng may positive tsaka value nung a pwedeng may negative. So, applicable yung right-hand side limit tsaka left-hand side limit doon sa mga theorems of limits. Okay? So, dahil constant lang siya, equal to sa 1. Okay? And then, dito naman sa limit ng signong function as x approaches 0 from the left. So, dito naman tayo titingin. X approaches 0 through the values less than 8. So, ito yun, di ba? Close enough. So, therefore, it approaches the value negative 1. Basta din dito sa graph. Okay? Now, napansin nyo yung limit ng signong function x from the right sa signum function x from the left as x approaches 0 ay hindi equal kasi 1 tsaka negative 1, di ba? Therefore, the limit of signum function x as x approaches to the actual value 0 is not defined. Base dun sa definition or theorem na pinakita ko sa taas. Kasi dapat equal yung right-hand side limit sa left-hand side limit para mag-exist itong limit of signum x as x approaches 0. Okay? Next, we have, let h be defined by h of x is equal to 4 minus x squared if x is less than or equal to 1, and 2 plus x squared if x is greater than 1. Okay, so piecewise function ulit. So, nahate yung function na h of x sa dalawang interval. So, when x daw is less than or equal to 1, so inclusive sa 1, yung value niya ay 4 minus x squared, Tapos, when x is greater than 1, yung value niya is 2 plus x squared. Then, find the limit of h of x as x approaches 1 if it exists. So, para ma-prove natin na nag exist or may value itong limit of h of x as x approaches 1, dapat uli na yung limit of h of x as x approaches 1 from the right ay equal sa limit ng h of x as x approaches 1 from the left then it will be equal now to the actual limit of h of x as x approaches 1. So, try natin. Limit of h of x as x approaches 1 from the right. So, ang i-assign nating value sa x ay yung greater than 1 but close enough to 1. So, base dito, ito tayo titingin sa range na to kasi greater than 1 yung x. So, ang gagamitin nating function ay itong 2 plus x squared. So, limit of 2 plus x squared as x approaches 1 from the right. So, applicable pa rin yung theorem limits natin. So, pwede natin i-substitute itong 1 sa lahat ng x dito sa function. So, 2 plus 1 squared is equal to 2 plus 1 or 3. Okay. Next, dito naman tayo sa limit ng h of x as x approaches 1 from the left. So, dahil mag assume tayo ng values ng x, Close enough to 1 but less than 8, dito tayo titingin. Okay? So, ang limit ng 4 minus x squared as x approaches 1 from the left is, substitute lang din natin yung value ng 1 sa x para makuha yung limit. By limit theorems, we have 4 minus 1 squared is equal to 4 minus 1 is equal to 4 minus 1 is 3. So, therefore, pareho yung value ng limit ng h of x as x approaches 1 from the right at from the left. So, therefore, the limit of h of x as x approaches 1 itself exists, which is also equal siya sa 3. Okay? Next, we have, let f be defined by the function f of x is equal to x plus 5 if x is less than negative 3 square root of 9 minus x squared if negative 3 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 3, and 3 minus x if x is greater than 3. Find the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3 and limit of f of x as x approaches, sorry, dapat ito ay positive 3 lang, if they exist. Okay, so ganun ulit, piecewise function. So, dun muna tayo sa limit ng f of x as x approaches negative 3. Para mag-exist ito, dapat yung limit ng f of x as x approaches negative 3 from the right ay equal sa limit ng f of x as x approaches negative 3 from the left. 
Therefore, yun yung magiging actual value nung limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3 itself. If ever defined. Okay? So, hanapin muna natin to. So, since dito sa limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3 from the right, titingin tayo sa values ng x na close enough sa negative 3 but greater than it. So, ano yun sa range? Ito yun, di ba? Kasi within the interval ng x yung greater than negative 3. Okay? So, ito yung gagamitin natin function. Square, to, square root ng 9 minus x squared. So, limit ng square root ng 9 minus x squared as x approaches negative 3 from the right. So, applying limit theorems, substitute lang natin yung value ng 3 dito sa x. So, square root of 9 minus negative 3 quantity squared is equal to 9 minus negative 3 squared is 9 equals square root of 0 equal 0. Okay, so next, limit naman ng f of x as x approaches negative 3 from the left. So, saan tayo yung ditingin? Mga values nung x na close enough sa negative 3 but less than it. So, obviously ito. So, ito yung gagamitin nating function. So, therefore, pahanapin natin yung limit nung x plus 5 as x approaches negative 3 from the left. Okay? So, substitute lang natin ulit yung negative 3 dito sa x plus 5. So, we have negative 3 plus 5 is equal to 2. So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung limit ng f of x as x approaches negative 3 from the left ay hindi equal sa limit ng f of x as x approaches negative 3 from the right. Kasi 0 is not equal to 2. So, therefore, yung actual limit ng f of x as x approaches negative 3 does not exist. Okay? Next, dun naman tayo sa limit of f of x as x approaches 3. So, ganun ulit. Dapat yung limit ng f of x as x approaches 3 from the right ay equal sa limit ng f of x as x approaches 3 from the left para mag-exist yung limit ng f of x as x approaches 3 itself at equal siya sa bawat isa. Okay? So, dun naman tayo sa limit ng f of x as x approaches 3. So, Ibig sabihin, hanapin natin value ng x ay close enough sa 3 but greater than it. So, dito tayo titingin. Okay? So, ang function natin is 3 minus x. So, hanapin natin yung limit ng 3 minus x as x approaches 3 from the right. So, substitute lang natin yung 3 sa x. Magiging 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. Next, limit naman ng f of x as x approaches 3 from the left. So, Hanapin natin yung values ng x na close enough sa 3 but less than it. So, saan yon? Dito naman kasi dito sa range na to nagpo-fall yung values ng x na close enough sa 3 but less than 3. So, ito yung gagamitin nating function. Square root ng 9 minus x. So, hanapin natin yung limit ng square root ng 9 minus x squared as x approaches 3 from the left. Okay, so substitute natin yung value. We have square root of 9 minus x squared, so 3 squared is equal to square root of 9 minus 9, equals square root of 9 minus 9 is 0, equals square root of 0 is 0. So, therefore, equal yung limit ng f of x as x approaches positive 3 from the right sa limit ng f of x as x approaches positive 3 from the left. So, therefore, yung actual limit ng f of x as x approaches 3 itself exists and is equal to 0. Okay? Okay, so I think that's it for this video, one-sided limit. So, sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panunood.